it's an opportunity for us uh, and the OECD and the European uh, Union, uh, both major actors on the African scene, to interact with the wider population on the challenges of the day. Now, we have uh, chosen to talk about skills because the modern economy is based on knowledge. The modern economy is not based on raw materials. If your subsoil is rich in raw materials, it is helpful. But what makes economic transformation is knowledge and skills. We think the growth rates in Africa are going to be the most exciting in the world in the next 10 to 20 years. So it's really, for us, we think it's a fantastic opportunity. We think what's happening in Africa now is very similar to the takeoff you saw in Southeast Asia in the 50s and 60s. So we really think that these high growth rates are sustainable. We think it's much more than just a commodity story. Africa is very, very innovative and advanced in telecommunications, in mobile banking, much more than Latin America, much more than Southeast Asia. Uh, so this is also the way that we want to, to look at the continent, a continent, I mean, to try, that is also a, a place of innovation. We don't associate too much Africa with innovation. Well, but we have innovation in telecommunications, for example, and mobile banking. And the biggest challenge Africa faces now is infrastructure. Infrastructure is actually getting worse, it's not getting better. Because the growth is so fast, infrastructure is just not keeping up. So the African Development Bank, the OECD and the European governments are still going to be incredibly important to helping Africa develop that infrastructure. It's vitally important uh, that we do invest in infrastructure and in fact uh, through the new partnership for Africa's development uh, the leaders of Africa have determined that for the next 15 years, a major part of our national investments will be directed toward enhancing infrastructure for trade purposes, but also for development. We work in three different ways on the aid. First of all, making sure that the aid flows and that it flows in the proper amounts as committed in Glen Eagles and in Monterey. Um, second, that we create more predictability in terms of the flows of aid, that we can program and plan the aid, which helps the recipient countries to plan their investments, but also in the aid effectiveness. Aid effectiveness is absolutely critical. There's no use in discussing development when the most marginalized and vulnerable in societies are excluded. And this may be uh, something that future fora uh, need to look at, at how do you actually have a conversation that is inclusive rather than focused on government uh, as well as multilateral uh, institutions. <laughs>